Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and on this video, we're gonna unbox and set up the LG C2. Now, this is the 48 inch model, and they do make it from a 42 inch all the way up to 83. So, if you're looking for a larger model, there is one available. So, again, this is not gonna be a full review, but since I just got it in, I'm making these playlists, so I'm walking you guys through how to set it up. The next video will be a full review, and then from that point, we'll make some mismatch match and comparisons. So sit back and relax, and let's get started. So I want to show you guys the box real quick. Over here, you can see that it has self-lit OLED Evo technology. It also has the fifth generation of the A9 processor. And over here, it has the ThinQ AI with WebOS operating system. And on its other side, it has the Google technology as well as Alexa. It supports Apple AirPlay and the Apple HomeKit, so you can control it with Siri. Now, when it comes to this model, it uh, weighs about 26 pounds. So you may be able to handle it on your own, depends on how strong you are. But if you get to the, like the larger ones, like the 83 model, you're definitely gonna need some assistance to get that up and running because the TV's gonna be way too heavy to get out of the box and get everything set up. So the first thing I wanna do is just get everything out of the box and then we'll take a closer look what everything is. So we got here, we got a couple parts over here on the side. Uh, it looks like a base to hold the TV on the table. And uh, let's go and get this styrofoam out. Now, as I look down in here, there's a few other pieces. And here's the TV, the last part in here, but look how thin it is. So I'm gonna make sure I'm very careful before I get this part out. So in the box, you get this guide that shows you how to mount the TV, put the feet on, as well as the batteries in the remote control. You also get some IR blasters and these plug into the TV so you can control devices that are not connected with HDMI. You get the LG Magic Remote Control, plus it comes with the batteries. It comes with an instruction book for the Magic Remote Control. There's a rear cover plate as well as some screws and a wire maintenance tie, an LG sticker. And this is the plate for the rear panel and it looks like a little slot right there for wire maintenance. And this piece right here, screws onto the front of it just for aesthetics. So now I'm gonna put in the three screws on the base here. And if you use a drill, make sure you use one with a clutch on it so you won't over tighten it. So I put one in there already as a placeholder. All right, so now we're gonna go and lift this TV onto the top here and uh, Looks good here. Let's go ahead and screw it in. And there you have it. And like always, I'll put everything here in a baggie with the batteries in the remote control. So here's a quick look at the back cover on the top here. It's glass and you gotta be very careful with that top piece here. Down here is uh, gray with uh, looks like aluminum, like brush aluminum finish, four screw holes so you can mount on the wall and attached power cord, which I particularly don't like. Now down here where I put the TV together, it comes with this little plastic piece. You can just stick it up inside of there and snap into place and that gives it that look. And then over here are the inputs. Now one thing about this base, is that you can pull this and then you have that groove so all your cords can go right here. So I do recommend if you're gonna mount it on the stand that you get a little bit extra longer cords. On this side of the TV, it has four HDMI 2.1 inputs and one is eARC so you can get that Adobe Atmos output and there's one USB connection right there at the bottom. Then on this side of the TV, you have a fourth HDMI 2.1 connection, two additional USBs, and this is where the IR blaster goes in to control devices as well as the TV tuner. Over here, you have a headphone output, which is great that they left that on here, as well as a service port. You have a fiber optic output, an ethernet connection, so you can hook it directly to a router. So it pretty much has everything you need. And again, this TV is ready to go for gaming. The thing I will point out is that it does support the G-Sync technology as well, which is cool. And down here, you can see it does support Dolby, Dolby Vision IQ, Adobe Audio and a few other things. Now, since this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to set it up. 
I have this HDMI 2.1 cable going over to a PS5, the second one going over to the Xbox Series X, and I do have an antenna plugged into it. And you can see the wire maintenance right here, it goes through underneath that cover and then out of the back. So it's gonna have a really nice clean look to it. A lot of people have this misconception about screen protectors. First of all, the LG puts a red tab right here, Samsung puts a blue tab. So if you don't see this, do not try to remove your protective film because manufacturers know that people are gonna try to remove it regardless. So that's why they put that tab on there. Before we get into the setup, look how thin this television is on top. Behind it, of course, is all the electronics that runs the television, but this is why you have to be very careful with OLEDs. So thin. A few last things I wanna point out is that there's a LED indicator right here on the front, lets you know that the TV is in standby mode. And on the base of the TV, you're gonna see LG OLED right here, which makes it look a lot premium, especially having a TV like this. So far, we got everything out of the box. I showed you guys the whole design, the inputs, and everything you need to know. Now, this is for people who are thinking about buying this television and seeing the setup process. So for the next few minutes, I'm gonna walk you guys through how to initially set this TV up using the remote control, but I will tell you, you can use the LG ThinQ application as well. So uh, let's just jump right into it. Now the TV is plugged in and turned on. The first thing I'm gonna do is press the center button on the remote control. Now on this screen, you get the option to use your mobile device or your TV. I'm gonna go ahead and use the remote control that comes with the TV. Now, if you don't wanna hear the TV talking to you for the audio guidance, you wanna go ahead and press no right here. On the first screen, you can choose your language and here's all the languages that are available. So I'm gonna choose English. Since this is a US model, it is grayed out. And then over here, we can select our time zone. You can see all the options right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose on Los Angeles. At the bottom, you have an option to use store mode. And I recommend leave that alone because if you don't, you'll start getting these demos like you get in the store. Once you select all that, you wanna go ahead and press on next. And then you wanna look through your list of Wi-Fi's and find yours and connect it and enter the password. Once you get everything entered, you can show password to make sure it's correct and then press enter here on the keyboard. The next step, you will get a bunch of terms and conditions that you need to read through. However, if you skip it, if you try to download certain applications or certain features, some things will not work. Now the TV did analyze and it did find my PS5 and the Xbox Series X like I told you guys earlier. And if it's finding everything, go ahead and press on next. The next thing you wanna do is choose how you watch your television. And since I use apps, I'm gonna just use antenna that I plugged into the back of it. Once you get everything set there, go and press on next. And then you wanna enter your zip code and this is for the LG channels. And I'll just throw something in here just to get it going so we can get to the next step. Now you do have a choice if you have the TV on the stand, which I do, you can select that. If you choose the wall mounted and use the built-in speakers, you wanna choose that so it can project the speakers a different way. Now this does not apply to any type of soundbar or anyone who's using HDMI arc off the back. Now, if you want the TV to automatically choose the sound and the picture, you can toggle this. And when I do my full review, I will put it in different modes. But for this video, I'm just showing you that it is an option. Now for the home launch, you can choose where it automatically goes to the home screen that shows you all the applications. That is an option that you can turn off and on, but I'm gonna leave it there for now. Now, if you plan on using this TV to play your music or voice recognition or anything like that from your mobile device or the remote control, you can leave this switch on where it says always ready or you can turn it off. But keep in mind when it's always ready, it will leave the microphone on the television on so it can use those features. Once you select what you like, go ahead and press on next. I did plug in the over the air antenna. So now it's gonna start scanning for channels. And generally in my area, I usually get between five to seven channels. After scanning for channels, you can see that this LG picked up 10 channels, which is pretty good. So once it does that, go ahead and press on done. Now, if you wanna have more controls of what this TV can do, you can download the LG ThinQ application or you don't have to. So these are different ways that you can sign in if you already have an account or you can set up an account. But for this video, I'm gonna skip that for now. If you have any of these applications, you can choose on which ones you want to install and this is so the TV will have them ready to go whenever your TV is done setting up. For now, I'm gonna go hit done, but if you choose one, it'll automatically download that application. 
And that's pretty much it. Now the TV is ready to go. This is the interface of the WebOS 6. And over here, you can see you have your home dashboard and this shows all your different connections. There's your sign up for Apple AirPlay, your live TV, the consoles that I added, as well as some other setups. If you go up here to the app tray, you have the LG channels and you can see it has a lot of applications and, and they have the LG shop, LG fitness, your app store, sports alerts, as well as art gallery, which is pretty cool. And this is an example of the art gallery. You can set it to a static image or you can have it where it goes through all types of different uh, patterns. So you always have some fresh looking art on your wall, especially if you put this TV on the wall brackets. So that's all I have for this one. And I will tell you so far, I'm really liking this LG TV, but I can't wait to get into more of the full review so I can test it out for myself to see how this TV really performs. I really like the fact that it has the four HDMI 2.1, so you have it ready for current gaming consoles and the future and beyond, as far as that goes. I like the aesthetics of it. It's got a nice clean look to it and the colors are vivid and the black levels are inky. So far, if you're looking for a television and you have the money to buy it, this might be a good contender to consider, but later on, I will come out with some comparison videos to see if it really holds true to the way it really performs. Now, while you're here, if you go down to the comment section, let me know, are you interested in buying this TV or have you recently bought one that you really like and enjoy? What's the pros and cons about the one that you purchased? Now, if you haven't bought a TV, I will tell you now I have a plugin that you can use for the Google Chrome browser that allows you to shop on eBay, Amazon, and Target and find my videos whenever you're looking for TVs that uh, I have actually done videos on in the past. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.